We're going to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, Satan, he's going to use great deception in the last days to bring a lot of people to hell and to bring up his one world government and new world order. Now, there's, these, uh, now there's a group that's coming out that's trying to say that if you are a pre-trib rapture believer, that it's opening up the door where you accept the Antichrist. So that's the deception the Antichrist would, will use. So they claim that there's this false rapture teaching. And with this false rapture teaching, they're probably going to have people disappear. Because here's the idea. Let's assume that you believe a rapture before the tribulation. So let me draw the timeline here so you, it can make sense. So here's a church age. This is a tribulation. That's a millennium. Tribulation. Church age. So that's where we are. We are in the church age. We believe that we will be raptured before the tribulation. So this is a rapture. And then over here we will put as a millennium, 1,000 years. Now, they teach this. So here comes the man of sin, the Antichrist. And this man of sin, when he comes to the scene, he's supposed to claim as Jesus Christ, right? That's what he's going to claim himself to be, Jesus Christ. Now, pre-trib rapture believers, we are looking for the Antichrist or Jesus Christ. We're looking for Jesus Christ, right, to come first, not the Antichrist. He comes after. But then the, these people who deny a pre-trib rapture, they argue this way. So here's the logic. If you're looking for Jesus uh, Christ first, not the Antichrist, that's not true. Because we believe that the Antichrist is going to come out first, not Jesus Christ. That's what post-trib rapture or people who deny pre-trib rapture or pre-wrath rapture or post-millennialists, that's what they believe in. They believe that the Antichrist will, will have to come out first, not Jesus Christ. Because think about this. If we're looking for Jesus Christ first, here comes the Antichrist, and he proclaims himself to be Jesus Christ. And because he proclaims himself to be Jesus Christ, these pre trib rapture believers who kept looking for Christ, they're going to say, oh, this is the one. And, you know, maybe there's going to be this false rapture set up and project and all set up, and then these pre trib rapture people are going to follow the Antichrist. So that's their argument. Now, the thing is, is that it's actually very silly. Now, no offense to people out there, it is a silly argument. At first, it sounded logical though, right? The reason why is I made it sound as logical as I can because that's what they're trying to say. They try to say this is how it's going to happen. But if you think a little bit more carefully, you're going to realize it, this really doesn't work. What is rapture? It's caught up, right? If this anti Is this Antichrist caught up or he goes down? He's, he's going down on the earth. Pre-trib rapture people are looking for to go to heaven, all right? If this Antichrist comes down on the earth and rules over the world, you know what pre-trib rapture people are going to think? They're going to think, this is the Antichrist. This ain't a rapture. Well, what if there's a false rapture of people disappearing? Well, the thing is, there might be a false rapture with people disappearing, but let's say that I'm a person who's a pre-tribber, okay, and I didn't get... And there was this false rapture, so let's say this is a false rapture. And then this false rapture had happened. Then you know what I'm going to think when I look at this guy? I'm going to think, you know, I missed the rapture. And I'm going through the tribulation with this Antichrist. See, that's just that simple. See? So this is a very nonsensical argument. So you got to realize this, is that this thing doesn't work. I'll tell you one thing. What if the pre-trib rapture people are wrong? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If we pre-trib rapture people are wrong, what's going to happen is this. We're automatically going to be post-trib like you are, okay? We're going to fight the Antichrist. We're going to realize that this is a deception. This pre-trib rapture didn't actually happen at all. See, that's what's going to happen if we're wrong. But if the post-trib rapture people are wrong, that's more dangerous. You might say, why? Because, okay, post-trib people 
or post-millennial people, or people who deny a rapture, all right? Whatever. The point is, these three groups follow two dangerous things that I don't know if you really thought about before. They follow two dangerous things. One, they believe that the church will go through the tribulation. And after they go through the tribulation, then finally Jesus Christ comes down on this earth and rules over the world. So the thing is this, is that they believe the church will go through the tribulation and eventually Christ will come down and rule over the world. Here's the problem. Every one of them, these three people, including post-trib rapture people, they use verses quoting that Christians are going through the tribulation. So they will use like the book of Acts. They will use the book of Corinthians that we must go through tribulation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The uh, we went through many trials and tribulations. That's what they're teaching. And that's the problem. The problem is, so then if you apply the church age with the tribulation, we don't know, we don't know how, uh, when the tribulation's starting, what's happening, and maybe, who knows, Obama's the Antichrist or whoever. We don't know. But what's going on is, is that we can't tell if we're in the timeline of the tribulation right now or whether we're not. And then, since we're going through the tribulation, in comes this Christ who comes to the scene and says, finally, I bring the rulership on the earth because that's what you've been waiting for me. Hey, churches, you've been waiting for me. You went through the tribulation. Now we, uh, I can rule over the earth. That's dangerous, don't you think? But we have a specific separation we can tell. It's going up to heaven. See that? Something dramatic like that going up to heaven, we can tell the pinpoint. So even if we're wrong, we won't get fooled. But these people, you don't have a specific timeline here of that specific division. So you can't tell. That's extremely, extremely dangerous. Now, number two, this is worse. You think that was bad? This is worse. What you three share in common is not just this belief. The church will go through the trib and Christ rules. The second problem is this. Do you know who believes this teaching that the church will go through the tribulation? Catholicism. The Antichrist, he is what? He's going to be a pope. Do you know who believes that the church will go through the tribulation? Cults. All kinds of different cults. Didn't you know that? Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventism, etc. You don't believe me? All you have to do is look at their quotes on es eschatology, what they believe. Now, what do you think is more one world religion? See that? That's dangerous. Here's the quote. Catholicism quotes, this is by Robert Brom, in Catholic Answers, their official website, Catholic Answer, Apologetic for Catholics website, August 10, 2004. The title is The Rapture. The problem with all of the positions, except the historic post-tribulational view, which was accepted by all Christians, including non-premillennialists, is that they split the second coming into different events. With respect to the rapture, Catholics certainly believe that the event of our gathering together to be with Christ will take place, though they do not generally use the word, word rapture to refer to this event. Somewhat ironically, since the term rapture is derived from the text of the Latin Vulgate of 1 Thessalonians 4.17, we will be caught up. So notice right here that the Catholicism, they don't believe in splitting the second coming to different events like we do. They, uh, they do not believe in this uh, doctrine where the church is pre-trib rapture, that they will go through the tribulation. Uh, let's also look at right here. Uh, if you, not only that, uh, I tell you to look at their catechism, their official, official catechism. 
I mean, it's online, the Vatican website. If you look at their official catechism about end times, about tribulation, it says that the church has to go through this fiery trial through this time of the tribulation. And then eventually Jesus Christ will come down and rule over the earth. Seventh-day Adventism, quote, this is by Samuel Bacciocci. The secret rapture, is it true? The title of the article in their Signs of the Times, January 2011. Quote, Revelation then portrays not a pre-tribulation rapture of the church, but a single post-tribulational return of Christ. In light of the reasons discussed here, we conclude that the popular teaching of a secret coming of Christ to rapture the church before the final tribulation is devoid of any biblical support. <laughs> Listen to this part. Such a belief makes God guilty of giving preferential treatment to the church by removing it from the earth while leaving believing Jews to suffer the final tribulation. <laughs> See, they deny dispensationalism. We believe that distinction with Jews and the church. Scripture, however, teaches that Christ's second coming is a single event that occurs after the Great Tribulation and will be experienced by believers of all ages and all races. This is the blessed hope that unites every nation, tribe, language, and people. So you see right here how these cults are combining these things. Not only that, here's another thing that I want to add. It's not just this one, but you got to realize this. Anti-Semitism. So they believe in replacement theology. Now this one, I'm going to make it shorter. Go to Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. Now you got to realize this. If you are listening and watching somebody who believes in a post-tribulation doctrine and replacement theology together, that's a double whammy of great heresy where you will be fully deceived by the Antichrist and even face greater damnation. Now you might say, why? Because you got to realize this, these cults and Catholicism, they combine these two together. Now, replacement theology teaches that uh, the Jews today are not real Jews. They believe that the Christian church is the real Jews. Now, that is baloney. I showed you from the scriptures that God has to divide the church from the Jews. I showed you too many videos on that one. But here's the thing, is that why is this teaching dangerous where you say that if you're the saint of God, that you're the real Jew? And that as the saint of God, who's the real Jew, you go through this tribulation. That is what cults and Catholicism teaches as a combination. Because I gave that Seventh-day Adventist quote, right? What did they say? They say to teach a pre-tribulation rapture is give, uh, giving preferential treatment to the church while the uh, believing Jews unfairly go through the tribulation. See that they have to combine the two together, not divide them. But dispensationalists believe in dividing them. That is so important, dispensationalism. Here's a quote from, do you know who claims that they're the 144,000? Do you know who claims that they're the real Jew? Jehovah Witnesses. So if you're a, a Christian who believes that you're a real Jew, you got to realize this. You're just going the way with the cults that you got to watch out for. Here's one called, We Want to Go With You, the title of the article. That sounds right. <laughs> that sounds right. Uh, June 8, 2016. This is the official www.jw.org, their official website. No one can know whether an anointed Christian will receive his heavenly reward until Jehovah judges that person to be worthy of such a prize. Jehovah makes this determination and gives him the final sealing, either sometime before he dies faithfully or sometime before the outbreak of the Great Tribulation. It would be pointless then for anyone now living on earth to try to ascertain who among God's servant will eventually be part of the 144,000. If it is not possible to know with certainty the names of all spiritual Israelites on earth today. See, they believe in that. They believe that they're the real Jew because they're spiritual Israel. How can members of the other sheep go with them? 
Notice what the prophecy in Zechariah states concerning the figurative ten men. These ones would take firm hold of the robe of a Jew, saying, We want to go it with you, for we have heard that God is with you people. Although only one Jew is mentioned here, in both instances, the pronoun you refers to more than one person. This spiritual Jew must, so they consider that Jew, that the ten men hold the skirt of a Jew, is referring to a spiritual Jew, which they themselves claim to be one. This spiritual Jew must then be a composite person, not just one individual. So it is not necessary to identify every spiritual Jew and then go with him or her. So you'll notice right here that the Jehovah Witnesses, okay, they're having this problem about, you know, who are the 144,000 because Christians keep giving them a hard time about that one. So how can you tell which one's 144,000? So they try to make it in a way, well, we can't ever tell, you know. But the point of this article was not that one. The point was, you notice that they keep believing that uh, this Jew that the Bible talks about is not actually referring to physical Israel, the Jews today, but rather they themselves, the spiritual saints, are the real Jews. Here's Catholicism. Quote, Jesus came to complete the Jewish religion. How? By creating a church that would serve as its fulfillment and be open to people of all races, not just ethnic Jews. See that? They're saying it's not just ethnic Jews. They're saying that Judaism is uh, this Jewish religion that Christ fulfilled is with the church that replaces them. As Catholics, we are those who have accepted the fulfillment of the Jewish faith by joining the church that Jesus founded. This is their article, Quick Questions. If Jesus was a Jew, why are we Catholic? By Catholic Answers website, June 8, 2016. Now look at Matthew chapter 25. See, it's a deadly combination. Not only that, there are some, listen to me now, this is important. There are some King James only Baptist independent fundamental pastors who can preach really hard that believe in this extreme deadly doctrine together. Replacement theology, post-trib rapture. Isn't that dangerous for people who believe the King James Bible is perfect? And here you are, you thought that you'd become a Bible believer because you believe the King James Bible is perfect, but then comes some heretical nut jobs who gives you these two deadly doctrines. That is what? These things have to combine post-trib and replacement theology together. This one world order, new world uh, religion. But not only that, we saw the danger as well as post-trib, right, concerning the Antichrist. But this one is even more dangerous. Do you know why? Okay, one thing to go with the Antichrist with post-trib doctrine. Another thing, that you go to hell. Because why? You think that the Jews today, the physical Jews today, are not real Jews. So you don't support them. And the Bible says that your salvation in Matthew 25 is dependent. Now, this is tribulation salvation, not church age salvation. So we don't have to do Matthew 25. But Matthew 25 is for people at the tribulation. And you have to follow this for your salvation. Look at Matthew chapter 25. And verse 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. So notice that Jesus Christ, he conquers the whole world, tribulation is done, and now he's going to judge people who go to heaven or to hell. Verse 32, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So notice that God, he invites this one side to enter the kingdom from the foundation of the world. What's this kingdom from the world? That's the millennium. Remember, Jesus is coming down after the tribulation. So this timing is perfect, Matthew 25. Now, to enter this millennial kingdom and not to go to hell, this one group entered this kingdom. Why? Verse 35, for us, verse 35, because they fed him. They gave him drink. He was a stranger. They took him in. Verse 36, they clothed him. They visited him in prison. But in verse 37, the righteous is asking the Lord, 
When did we feed you, clothe you, visit you in prison? And God says, when you do it to the least of my brethren, in verse 40, then you did it to me. Verse 40, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So when you do it to my brethren, you notice what Jesus said, my brethren. Why is that important? Because that's referring to Jews. It's not referring to saved Christians, fellow Christians. When you hear churches quoting Matthew 25 as part of your salvation, that is heresy. That is for the tribulation, their salvation. And my brethren is not to Christians. My brethren, Jesus says, is for Jews. How do you know that, Pastor? Because who's the author here? Matthew. Whenever Matthew mentions brethren, it's referring to a Jewish context. Especially when Jesus said, my brethren, like his bloodline. The simple answer is just look at Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 8. So some of you have heard me use these verses over and over again. Verse 8. But be not ye called what? Rabbi. So this is Jewish. God is speaking to Jews. This is not Christian church. I don't want you to call me a rabbi, okay, when you come here. Okay, <laughs> for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are what? Brethren. See that? So this is referring obviously to Jews. These are all brethren. So this is supporting the Jews. Now go back to Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Why? Why did this other side go to hell? Because verse 42, 43, 44, they did not feed, clothe, visit in prison. Especially feeding, right? And visiting in prison. How That makes more sense in tribulation, right? Because in tribulation, you have to have the mark to eat, to drink. If you're not on the Antichrist side, you're in prison. This really makes sense. See, that not only that, Jews are persecuted in the tribulation. Matthew 24, uh, Daniel 9. I mean, th this makes perfect sense. This is referring to the timeline of the tribulation and God's judging them who will be worthy to enter the millennial kingdom. Verse 45, because they failed to take care of Jesus' brethren, the Jews. So you know what the dangerous thing is? This is more dangerous because when you keep saying that these guys are fake Jews, they're not real Jews, and then when if you believe you're going through the tribulation and you're going through that event, and then when these Jews are seeking shelter and help, are you going to, you know what these people are going to be doing? These people, they're because they say, oh no, you're the fake Jews. You're the real conspirators. Uh, conspirators. So you know what? Uh, no, thank you. And then if you don't support the Jew, the Bible says you burn in hell forever. So not only that, you uh, don't help out the Jews, but this post-trip stuff is like a double whammy where you think that you've been through the tribulation. Here's this Christ that we follow. Oh, by the way, this Antichrist or this Christ Hey, these are the real conspirators, these fake Jews in Israel. Hey, let's get rid of them. And are you going to side with him on that one? Not only that, but the whole religious world follows him on that one. So that's why these two doctrines, if you are part of watching somebody who teaches these two combination of doctrine, this is demonic, this is hellish and evil. You have to avoid them completely. And I stress that so much. Some people say, what's the... Why do you, uh, why is this a big issue about pre-trib rapture, post-trib rapture, replacement theology? Because this could be something, a greater evil that the devil could use. And not only that, as a Bible, as a Christian, you're responsible for believing in right doctrine, not wrong doctrine.